part of what's going on is, is that Sean is part of a group of physics influencers who are constantly spreading misinformation. What you are doing is creating an environment of fear. I have no idea where Sean gets this stuff. You and a small cadre of people are like intellectual border collies whose key feature is the exclusion of different perspectives. Um, he did respond. It just shows that none of this is serious. serious um, uh, speaking about what I'm talking about, he said, uh, this is not something that is going to be a thing. He also says that he hasn't read it. The good news is I have read Eric's paper. Here it is. I actually have it here, right here. And uh, it's worse than you would think. You know, it just very quickly, it starts off by saying the author is not a physicist and is no longer an active academician, but is an entertainer and host of a podcast. This work of entertainment is a draft work in progress and it may not be built upon. So we're not allowed to think about Eric's theory and write a follow up paper about it. This document is an attempt to begin recovering a rather more complete theory, which at this point is only partially remembered and stitched together from old computer files, notebooks, recordings, and the like, dating back to as far as 1983. And this is why this is paper is not going to appear in the peer-reviewed literature. It's not serious. It's a dog ate my homework kind of thing. If you have a dark matter oh, thing, you, if you have a dark matter prediction, if you have a dark energy prediction, I want to see a plot in the paper. I want to see redshift no, no, versus no, distance. You're... I want to see a calculation of a relic abundance so I can figure out how much dark matter is supposed to be. If you do that, Sean. people will pay attention to the theory. I would like sure. to let people out there know who might be working outside the academic physics community that it is 100% possible to have a good idea and have it have an impact on what physicists do. But it's not easy. You have to do a certain amount of work to show that your theory is worth the time, that it is respectable, that it is interesting, that it is promising. The first thing you gotta do is make sure that your theory makes contact with modern physics as it is understood. If you have a new paper out, physicists are gonna look at it. They're gonna look for, you know, where's the Lagrangian? Where's the interactions? Is the proton stable? Is there dark matter? Like, how does it fit into what I already know? Eric's paper has none of that. You would also ask, have, has me? the theory been shown to be viable in a very basic way? Is it stable? Is it free of anomalies? Is it finite in the sense of the quantum mechanical calculation that I already mentioned? Again, none of that is there. And finally, does your theory solve any interesting problems that we already thought we had? That's the reason why string theory became interesting, because we had this, th this problem with quantum gravity that it gave infinite answers, and string theory solved that problem. And again, I see none of that in Eric's paper. So it's very possible that somewhere in Eric's theory there are interesting ideas, but he has given us no reason to think that it is a promising theory. There is no quantum mechanics in the paper. There's no attempt at showing that this solves any of the known problems of quantum gravity. Again, it's just not just about Eric, it's about anyone. If you want to make an impact on the physics research community, you have to give them a reason to think that what you do is promising. I encourage other people who would like to have an impact on the research agenda of modern physics to take these easy steps rather than going on podcasts and talking about their victimization. Oh, my neck! <laughs> <laughs>